I am doing a 100 jig giveaway. I figured I would put that message at the beginning of the video this time so you guys wouldn't miss it. At 5,000 subscribers, I'll be giving away 100 hand-tied jigs tied for a variety of species. And if you guys want to be notified when the giveaway goes live, all you have to do is subscribe and hit the bell notifications. Today, we're going to be tying another unique crappie jig, and this one is called the Rubber Bugger. And as the name would suggest, it is a bugger-style pattern tied predominantly with rubber materials. The head we're tying on today comes from Chase 25 Crappie Jigs, and this is the Blaze Orange Lizard pattern. And if you're looking for some crappie jig heads that don't have collars so they're perfect for tying and you really like these cool dragon style of eyes it's a great place to find them and i'll leave a link where you can find these jig heads and all of the other materials that we're going to be using today down in the description of the video and today i'm going to be tying with some 70 denier utc ultra thread in fluorescent fire orange and you could tie this with 140 denier or 210 denier it doesn't really matter but i will suggest that you color match to your materials with your thread because there's a higher likelihood that some of your thread will be exposed just because of the nature of these materials. So to get started, I'm going to lay down a base layer of thread from my jig head all the way down to the start of the bend of that hook. And now we're going to tie in our tail and we're going to be using the Daddy Long Legs in Hot Orange by Hairline. And these things are really cool. They're long, thin, micro rubber legs that have a ton of movement and they behave almost like hair when they're underwater. And when I cut these, I cut the entire strand from the pack. These are shorter right now because I've already tied up a couple of these jigs. So what I want to do here is measure out a section that is about twice the length of our hook and we're going to go ahead and cut that off. After removing the desired amount, I'm going to hold that in position on top of the hook shank so that the rubber legs end just before the jig head. And then I'm going to perform one loose capture wrap just to hold those rubber legs in place. And then I'm going to wrap around one more time. And this time I'm going to let go of the rubber legs and pull on that thread. And that's going to spin those rubber legs around the hook shank. And now I'll continue applying tension with that thread and that's going to cause these rubber legs to distribute evenly around that hook shank and using my fingers I'm just going to stroke those back on either side of the hook point just to make sure that they're evenly distributed. All right, with those legs captured and evenly distributed around the hook, we are now going to wrap around those legs all the way up to the jig head. And all of the wraps that we make between our tie-in point and the jig head are also going to be loose wraps. If we cinch down and make tight wraps on these rubber legs, they're going to flare out and that's going to make it very difficult to create that nice even body along the hook shank. So I'll just hold my legs in place here and I'll start going around, working my way up toward that jig head with loose wraps. And as I continue to make these loose wraps, you'll notice that the rubber legs are not flaring out. They're just getting tighter and tighter up toward that jig head. Once we have made it all the way to the jig head with those loose wraps, I'm going to pinch our rubber legs in place right here at the tie-in point, And I'm gonna start working back toward that tail. This time I'm going to increase the tightness of those wraps more and more as we work our way back to that tail. After making it back to the tail with those tighter wraps, I'm now going to wrap my thread back up about halfway up the hook shank. And now we're going to tie in the body. And for that, I'm going to be using this small size flexi chenille by Hairline in hot orange color. And this is a really cool and unique chenille with thousands of little rubber appendages. And it's even got some nice UV flash in there. And you'll notice that the piece I'm using here is not very long. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way because it is quite thick. So to tie in our chenille, we first just want to remove the fibers and little rubber appendages from the first half inch section of that chenille. And now we'll just capture the bare thread of our chenille with a loose wrap to that hook shank and then wrap it in tightly all the way back to that tail. Once our chenille is tied in, we can now move our thread back up to that jig head and then out of the way using our bobbin holder. Next, we're going to perform tight wraps with our chenille up the hook shank all the way to the jig head. Once 
Once we have finished those wraps, we just want to take our thread and capture that chenille by wrapping underneath twice, and then in front twice. And now we can take our scissors and snip that chenille close to the hook shank. And now I'm going to finish this up with a five turn whip finish, but before I do, I'm going to give my thread a nice spin just to make it a little bit stronger. And now we can go ahead and pop this jig out of the vise. Now this is looking pretty good, but you'll notice here that the tail is a bit blocky because of that straight cut. So right now what I'm going to do is trim up some of these rubber legs at variable lengths just to create a little more taper in the tail and make it look a little bit more natural. All right, after trimming up, we have some variable length in those rubber legs and it's just looking a little bit more natural. And one added benefit of using these rubber materials is that this jig will be usable through the ice. A lot of the jigs that are tied with hair or marabou feathers and things like that don't perform well under the ice. But rubber, on the other hand, does do well through the ice, and these daddy long legs, despite being made out of rubber, perform a lot like hair when underwater. So now I'm going to throw this rubber bugger in my testing tank, and we're going to take a look at those daddy long legs and see how they perform. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video and we're gonna give it hell this year. We're gonna catch a lot of fish, hopefully some really big ones, and we're gonna do it in some really cool ways. So I hope you guys will come back and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.